Greetings my lovelies, this is Tracy of Tracy Vanover Designs. Welcome to Last Thing Thrifted Red, White and Blue Celebration. It's being hosted by John of Shabby Meets Bling and we're joined today by Monica of Up All Night DIY, Jody at Southern Seasons, Zaina at OK at Home DIY, and yours truly. Be sure to check out links to their channels as well as the full playlist below and you will find lots of red, white and blue inspiration. Now let's start off with my first project, an hors d'oeuvre tray. I found four of these at the thrift store. I'm only doing two for this video. They were originally more of a cherry wood finish, so it did take several coats of this blue paint. This is a deco art color. Um, I believe it is called True Blue. I ended up going, I believe, three coats on this. You'll see that I'm reverting back to my handy dandy two inch foam brush that I love so much and it worked out particularly well for these little trays because you've got these little divots in the center to hold your hors d'oeuvres and it's got the little uh, lip cut into it for your wine glass so my two inch brush though I look very awkward here <laughs> painting this you're gonna have to trust me that it that this brush was really handy for this project now once I got those painted I did distress them back so a little bit of that cherry wood that little red tone is showing and then I hit it with some dark wax now that particular portion of the process is not on camera once I did that I mixed up some food safe resin at a one-to-one -one ratio I have the link to the product I used down below for you in the description box and this is a really cool product. Um, hat tip to Dawn at Chevy Meets Bling for suggesting this. I knew I wanted to do a resin treatment in the little divot area to sort of raise it up and make it um, a little bit easier to clean, but also just give it a little bit more of a finished look. Um, this is a self-leveling resin and it does not um, have bubbles in it, which was really fantastic. Um, I did do this outside, but once I got that poured, I took it inside and placed it on a level surface. And it does take between 24 and 48 hours for it to fully cure. So you want to make sure that nothing gets near it in that dry time. Next up, let's go to a vintage jar. This was such a great find. You see the, the super zoom there that I did on the lid. I used the hammered metal finish for that lid. Um, and Mr. Vanover, another hat tip, I have to give him um, a hat tip for helping me step up my spray paint game. As far as spray painting goes, I looked like a street artist that was tagging uh, the subway <laughs> and I really needed some help. So he showed me how to do the short bursts and doing multiple coats and you really do get a much better finish when you do it this way. Now, though I always use the Rust-Oleum um, 2X in the heirloom, I love the heirloom white. For some reason, it left a little bit of a pebbled finish on this jar. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna sand it back a little bit. And then once I started sanding, well, you see what happened. I couldn't stop. So I was like, ooh, I think I really wanna go distressed on this. So I sanded back quite a bit. I hit that embossed area of the jar in particular. And then I went back with my Waverly Dark Antique Wax and I really, really love how this looks. Now you could use this jar for a floral centerpiece, you could use it to put candy in, you could put silverware in it for your picnics, etc. And next up is the Redwood Bottle Carrier. Now this was another fun thrift shop find. I disassembled it so that I could paint it and I created my own custom navy blue paint for this by mixing the nautical blue and ink shades from Waverly. And I did um, a little bit more black than blue. And you know, it's just a trial and error sort of thing, folks. You mix it up to, you know, create the color that suits you best. But don't be afraid to mix colors when you don't have a particular color on hand. And next up, once it was completely painted and it did take about three coats, I again went back with my little palm sander here and I'm taking it back to the redwood finish so that you see a little bit of that and we've given it a really nice distressed look. Now, I'm not quite finished with it yet. There's gonna be a few more steps in this process, but um, it took a little bit of time to do this because for some reason that paint, you know, I put three coats on there and it took a minute to get it 
uh, stripped back to what I wanted. And I did not do the inside. The inside was terribly difficult to get to. So I just did it on the outside portions. Next off, I taped off some stripes with my painter's tape and you'll see I'm using the, um, I think this is called sheepskin. This is another Waverly chalk paint. If I'm, um, if it, that's not the shade, I'll be sure unless the correct one in the description box. And the reason why you put a lighter shade down first before you come back in with the red is because we're working on that navy blue and it's such a dark shade that if I did not put that white down first, the red would not show up nearly as brightly. And I really wanted that to pop. So that's a little tip that you might want to do. Next up, we're going to do a rustic candle box. This is going to be perfect as a centerpiece for our little picnic celebrations. You could put citronella candles in there to sort of do double duty and keep the mosquitoes away. Um, this was a thrift store find that originally was very, very 80s. It said family on the side. Um, you see it's got a crack down the center on the top. I don't mind that at all. I thought it added to the rustic look that I was going for. I again used my custom navy blue paint, hit it with about three coats, and then I sanded it back so that I've got that distressed look on the edges. And I really worked hard on the corners to keep those rounded out. Um, the original design had it distressed just a little bit, but I wanted to go quite a bit more. So you'll see that I hit this quite a bit with the distressing and um, evidently I filmed <laughs> quite a bit of me distressing and off camera. Next up, we're going to go back in and do some more of those stripes to sort of tie it into our bottle carrier. And again, here's a tip. Use a white undercoat before you put on a darker color like the red. There's Cooper Puppy with a butt shot. Of course, he's not going to show his face, but he does want to be on camera. I believe he aspires to be internet famous. Next, I'm using that two inch roller brush again. I'm back in here with the, I think this is Tuscan Red. This is again a Waverly chalk paint. And I'm going just around the box and doing that center stripe. Now that the white is dry, I can put that red on there and it'll really pop. Here you see I've peeled back the tape and now I am adding some antique wax. And I'm just going to wipe that away. And it gave such a nice distressed finish. Now, I, I want to know what you guys think. Please feel free to chime in below. I got a very Nautica vibe off of this. Um, my husband was like, oh, I think it's more Ralph Lauren. Okay, but no matter what, I'm definitely getting sort of a coastal Cape Cod sailing type vibe off of this. Tell me what you think. I'd love to know. Do you think I should have added another red stripe or do you think one is good? And next up, we're gonna do our cabinet door tray. This was so fun. I found this cabinet door at the ReStore, gave it a coat of the red paint, again, the distress wax. I didn't think it was quite distressed enough after I got that wax on, so never fear. Went back in with a sanding sponge and I'm just doing a little bit more detail sanding. The handles that you see on the tray, those are just cabinet handles. And now let's take a look at my finished projects. This is our finished bottle carrier. It's got a little bottle opener on the side. Next, you'll see this is one of our little hors d'oeuvre trays with a wine glass in it. And look at how the, the resin shines in the sunlight. I love how that turned out. That is our jar with the lid on it. I've added just a simple bow with some ribbon from Hobby Lobby, but it gives such a great vintage vibe. Here is our candle centerpiece with the little glass cups that came with it. I've got some uh, battery operated tea lights in there but again you could use whatever you want and lastly this is our red cabinet door tray what a great way to bring drinks or treats out to your guests for a summer picnic i want to thank you for taking time to watch this video today and thanks to dawn for hosting this collab hit me up over on etsy at fpop.com and as always thanks so much for watching